go. Hello and welcome back to Precalculus 1, sections 1, 4 and 1, 5 about linear lines, slope, y-intercept and all that good stuff you guys have seen in uh, algebra courses. Now we are going to just take a little one step further and calculate what we also call the rate of change, which technically is the slope. But before we go all the way there, uh, last class I gave you the list of functions that you are supposed to memorize in their native state. We looked at a couple of those. I gave you the list. Uh, these notes will be uploaded in uh, Canvas so you can get to them and study uh, and uh, second function on the list uh, with the graph of the straight line is the linear function or the straight line which you guys are using uh, to uh, show uh, certain models right in in math so anything that fits a straight line increase or decrease we will use the linear function uh, then the number two, number three, number four, they will all belong in chapter two eventually, uh, where we talk about polynomials and so on. So now to review the good old line from algebra, uh, in 1.4, uh, we can start with um, first understanding the way we graph this. I did suggest you to take to get the square notebook because we are going to have graphs almost every class. And uh, I mentioned that, right, we have a straight line that cuts through value B, uh, which is called the uh, y-intercept. So B is called y-intercept, and that simply means the graph of the straight line cuts through y-axis. Now, if you pick any point on the line, it will have coordinates x, y, and that is the location in space. Now, this means that your um, line goes through that point, goes through that x, y location, and this is literally location uh, that you can imagine on the floor location on the wall, right, whatever surface you draw on or walk on. Uh, at this point, I would like, to, like you to think about the GPS unit that you are using to get places. GPS unit is telling you to make a left or a right. And what it is, it's a projection of the, 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 the surface of the, of the planet with all the streets and addresses and everything, right? And you are going from point A to point B, maybe just down the street, or maybe you're going to take a couple of highways and so on to get from point A to point B. There is no difference in understanding the way the GPS works in terms of connecting you from point A to point B and uh, the graph in mathematics. Because technically what GPS has is this flat surface that contains, right, make a left, make a right. I can, I can draw that, go a little bit, you know, go forward and then make a right and then uh, go forward and then make a left and then go forward and go a right a lot and then you, you got there, right? That's a GPS map, right? So we can do that. Or maybe the, the, the line curves, right, and then we can just call it x squared. That's, that's the way the, the, the street went. The highway had, had a turn in it, right? So graphs uh, are just this, what we say, two-dimensional, so tabletop or a floor or a, or a whiteboard or wall. It's this flat representation of the, the two-dimensional world on which you can draw straight lines, curved lines, and so on. And it's technically just the way to get from one point to another point. So B, uh, so to, to actually, before I say B, um, so to do that easily, we set these coordinate axes, and then we have some 
point called origin, which is zero, zero, and we measure everything from that point. Now, if you are um, trying to connect this to something that you might be familiar with, just think about the sides of the world where you have the north and the south and the east and the west, and then north is your y-axis and east-west is your x-axis. There, there is no difference, absolutely no difference. And then you can go north on a map, which means you're going in a positive y direction. So we technically just have different letters and concepts attached to it, right? Because we use x and y to be general. But then you can also think about the map going up is north, going down is south, and then north-south uh, line axis is called the y axis. And the same, same has for west and uh, east. So B is the y intercept and you are somewhere on the y axis wherever that b is if it's a 2 it's a 2 if it's negative 7 it's below right and then you have to get to the other point and to get to the other point you use slope m and you use it as what you learned before rise over run more on, on that later you can put all of this into y equal mx plus b which we already said that we can also understand as a function mx plus b because we learned that y equals f of x on day one of this class now one thing that you can notice here that this b is on the y-axis which means that x coordinate is zero X coordinate is the first coordinate in the point, Y coordinate is the second coordinate in the point, and that, what we call origin, has 0, 0. So it's 0 on X and 0 on Y. If you go 0, X up, right, if you go 0, X and you go up, you will eventually reach B, but it's only the Y axis that has changed the coordinate. The coordinate for X axis stays 0 because you are only going up. In order for you to change the x coordinate, you have to go to the side. Because x numbers increase to the right. This is where 1 and 2 and 3 for x values, right? So in order to change the x coordinate, you have to go left and right. In order to change y coordinate, you have to go up and down. And if you want to change both of them, then you have to go sideways. You have to go up and left at the same time, let's say. So, in algebra, which is what we are reviewing now, you have to deal with the graph y equals uh, 3 fifths x plus 2. And you were supposed to graph this. There are two ways in which you can deal with this. One way is to compute a couple of points and then connect them with a straight line. Uh, the better and faster way is to know what these two numbers do and how you can use them to graph quickly. So I'm going to work out both methods and then um, you just need to review and make sure that you can graph linear lines as fast as possible. So the first method, the one that we generally use, is by figuring out that your y-intercept is 2. y-intercept is the location where the line cuts through y-axis. Now I have the slope of 3 over 5, which is rise 3, run 5. We always run to the right. So I'm going to raise three units. So from two, I went all the way up to five because I have to go up three. And then I'm going to go to the right five spots. And that's going to land me at five, five location because I went five units to the right 
from 0. So that gives me 5 for x. And I am at the elevation of 5 on y. And that's 5, 5. So now we draw the straight line through these two points. And that line is the graph for the function above. So this method is the fastest because all you need to do is to count. There are no calculations of any kind. You either know the three steps or you don't, right? Step number one, graph y-intercept. That is the number circled in red, and that is, going, that is going to be a value somewhere on the y-axis. So that's your step one. You draw a point. That's my red two. Then you count rise over run. So step two is to obtain the second point, in my case, 5, 5. You have to go three units up from two, and then five units over to the right, and that lands you at 5, 5. Step number three is to connect the two points, and you're done. If you have a negative, instead of going up, you will go down. And you still say you go to the right for the run part. So I'll get you to... So here, try um, negative one-third x plus 4. Negative one-third x plus 4. Let's take a look at this. We are going to apparently not draw anything because the pen decided to disconnect. One of the good rules of engineering is draw big, so you can see. A plus 4, 
that's going to be y intercepted 4 and then we're going to go one unit down three units over one unit down and then one two three units over and you draw the line if you want to repeat the behavior you can one unit down three units over one unit down three units over you can keep going like that because all of the line all of the points will be what we say collinear they always all have all of them have to fall on the same line and then you can use your uh, you can use a student id credit card or whatever to draw the straight line through these now this point here is 3 3 because you see that it's 3 on x and 3 on y this point here is 6 on x 2 on y and so on so you can find every location and you can think of these locations these dots literally as addresses you are trying to hit with your with your gps right maybe you do the delivery I don't know. now this slope is negative so now what we are learning about slope is that negative slope looks like that positive slope looks like this zero slope is horizontal line these are again we are reviewing stuff that you seen in algebra course slope has formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 which will get us to calculate problems for 1.5 which is what we are aiming for this formula is important because we are going to change this formula into what we need for pre-calc not yet give me a little bit of time uh, before we get there let's see if you remember two problems to write the equation of the line. First problem says write the, this is still review, equation of the line given slope of three quarters and a point let's say 8 and negative uh, 1 whatever does anyone remember how to deal with this yes you do wouldn't you graph it and then follow the slope to find the second points and then you do the uh, slope to find what you said can be done it's just a long way around but yes you would definitely figure out the right answer doing that okay. it's just gonna take longer let's see if we can get the shortcut yes excellent plug it into y equal mx plus b because we are looking for the y equal mx plus b formula right equation so if i have y equal mx plus b what do i have in a text m is three quarters x is eight y is negative one plug them where they belong and calculate value for value for b and you're done
so this would be negative 1 equals 3 quarters times 8 plus b 8 and 4 cancel to 2 so negative 1 equals 6 plus b from where we say b equals to negative um, 7 and then equation is y equals 3 quarters x minus 7 so that will be the equation of the line why is this not charging One more problem to use that formula for slope and then we can go and take a look at the pre-calculus features. Write the equation of the line given 3, negative 6 and what? Uh, Zero one, thank you. Couldn't think of any numbers on a spot. So you have to use that slope formula to figure out the slope and then do the same procedure as before. Do we all have the same slope of negative seven thirds? Yeah. All right, keep going. Plug in the rest.
Now, do we really want to plug in 3, negative 6? Or we can just see that uh, we have a y-intercept already given because we have 0, 1. So we can just write the equation from here. Negative 7 thirds x plus 1. We don't have to compute anything because the 0, 1 point was given to us. And any time you have that, it's already the uh, y-intercept. So we're good. That's it. Now, if you did use the point, you still computed b equals 1, right? So, um, it's just a shortcut. Cool. So, this was boring algebra. That's what this was. And generally, 0.1% of people care which I agree with, right? Because who cares, right? It's algebra. But we start caring when it becomes important to our life, right? Um, slope of the roof, so that the snow can slide off and not cave in your right roof. Uh, slope of the roof as well to get the rain away so you don't get flooded or, uh, or, or mold. So slopes are good on roofs. You also want to slope your driveway to take away the water away from the house, right? So it's not seeping into the basement. That's also good. Uh, roads, highways are also sloped. Otherwise, it would just be a huge lake to drive on, right? So they are sloped, and we care about those slopes. Truck drivers have to worry about slope of the road. You know how sometimes the road goes really steep up the, up the hill? Well, when you're driving a car, you don't worry too much, right? Even if the car doesn't have like 200 horsepower, you can still can't climb anything, right? Huge problem for truck drivers, which is why they have those signs that tell them what the slope is, so they know which gear to use. Is their cargo going to shift, or maybe you know just break through the through the back, right, and just go tumbling down the the right the road? So. We do care, right, about these things. What is the slope at which you are going to angle the plane to either take off or land? That's important. You can't just wing that. <laughs> so, a lot of reasons to calculate slope. Sure, some are silly math problems, but many of the situations when you are calculating slope are very, very relevant to what you what you do around so we can calculate the equation of the line if we know what is the good slope for the water to right drip off then you can you can make that uh, into uh, algebraic equation maybe um, you have a plan that it's not unlimited data on your phone and they tell you, I really don't know what the numbers are, but maybe someone can help. Um, if you play flat fee for, let's say, four gigs of data uh, on your cell phone, and then each additional gigabyte is 10, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, I, I don't know, really, I don't know. 10 bucks, thank you. So, we can model those things because the slope represents payment per usage. So let's take a look at the cost of the cell phone data plan or whatever. And it goes like this. These are the words when you are at the store. 4 gigs, 
for 50 bucks a month plus 10 bucks for each additional gigabyte over four gigabyte that's your plan you understand what this means without any math you have to give 50 so you can use your phone in january and then if you go over four gigs of data you will have to pay additional 10 bucks if you go another one in addition to that you have to pay another so for seven gigs what's your bill for seven gigs perfect i don't think that you actually made a linear equation and plug the x in right no we're just alive right pretty much the only prerequisite right right you you maintain temperature roughly 90s right you breathe in and out <laughs> yeah and and that's it yeah, welcome to class so now we're just going to transfer this into a linear equation and then you can project right the future and so on and this is why we love mathematical functions because they can tell us the future and we can we can play with these things now we are going to do a little bit spicier example later on in a, in a section when we do application problems where you are going to pick a better plan because remember competing company will say well how about if we offer a $40 plan but every extra gigabyte is 12 bucks ah so do you want to pay less every month and then if you go over pay more or you want right so we're going to take a look at a problem like that later not now when we use multiple lines now i just want to learn how to convert one situation that you deal with and this is not just plans for this you want to rent a car what do you have the flat fee for a for a day or a month and then extra miles so pay per mile or or pay by hour if you rent at a home depot or lowe's right uh, you can rent truck i don't know if you know that but you can rent a truck for 20 bucks uh, if you need to move a piano or something let's say right uh, you can rent a truck at home depot or lowe's right so and it's pay by hour or somewhere else you can pay by mile or somewhere else you can pay by day they only have different right and if you are able to make a decision you can save some money and obviously saving money here and there makes into this one big saving so what do i have i have 50 which is the flat fee that i'm so let's say cost c equals right cost equals or bill equals cost equals 50 bucks a month plus plus the unknown extra use of data times 10 dollars for each so if i plug in x equals one that means i used one gigabyte extra and then times 10 is 10 bucks if i plug in three for three extra gigabytes then three times 10 is 30 bucks plus 50 is 80 as right you suggested so i hope you see y equal m x plus b when you ar arrange that in the order that you are used to seeing it now i'm not going to use y i'm going to use c for the cost and i'm not going to use x i'm going to use g for gigabytes because it's applied problem can you use x sure y sure put whatever n for counting numbers because you use one gigabyte or two gigabytes they're not gonna charge you six dollars for 0.6 of a gigabyte they're just gonna charge you the full 10 bucks because you went over one right it's what we call step function just like your taxes right taxes have levels 10 percent 12 percent 15 percent right so so they go 
in, in steps. So this is how you convert reality into mathematics. So if you know that particular company is charging 50 and then extra 10, and then you know that your friend has the same company and your friend complained, I just wasted $130 on my cell phone bill. <coughs> what can you compute immediately? Yeah. What can you compute? You can compute x. And what's x? Um, wait, no, no. Um, you... no I, don't, I'm not, I don't care about the number. I, I just want to know what x represents. What can you compute? The extra, um, amount. extra gigabytes, yes. As soon, as soon, as someone says, I just spent 130 bucks on a cell phone bill. Go on, you plug in 130 at the cost, you subtract 50, you get 80. You divide by 10, you get 80. Uh, this person should be investing in unlimited plan, right? Not racking up $130 bills every month because I'm streaming high definition YouTube in my 4K screen, like five inches. Right? But that's your generation. I'm not going to go into that. So 130 equals 10 G's or 10 X's, whatever, plus 50. Subtract 50 on both sides. And this is algebra, right? So you get AD equals 10 X. X equals 8 extra gigabytes which means that this person used the four that you get in those 50 right and then plus extra eight used 12 gigs of data that month right now texting and stuff generally doesn't i mean you should have your phones connected to wi-fi anytime right you can but let's say this person likes the outdoors life in the forest wrestling bears most of the time. Right? Anyone? Good. You? Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. They're cuddly. They're cuddly. I just spent 30 minutes discussing with four students at my office hours today who would win between a, a bear and a, and, a, and a gorilla in a fight. Probably the bear. I knew that this is going to be an awesome thing to, to have the class go like one against the other. So guess what we were doing during the break? That conversation. Oh, what kind of bear? Uh, it was a brown bear versus um, some kind of uh, silverback. silverback gorilla. Thank you. That's the, that's the one. So you can start Googling things. Uh, obviously, you want their weight and the strength and everything else. All right. Um, so we have, uh, we have this problem. Cool. Now, what we are calculating every time when we have the word problem like this, we are calculating the slope. And the slope is also called a rate. You are paying at the rate 10 bucks per gigabyte. That's a rate. Like miles per gallon, right? Your car has a certain rating. Generally, you know, car that most of the people will drive is 30 miles per gallon. You know, take Honda City, for instance, right? 30 miles per gallon. Then you push it to 40 miles per gallon for Prius. And um, when, you have, uh, when you have that statistic, right, you understand the rate because you can drive certain amount of miles and then you spend the gallon. So 30 
miles, you drive 30 miles, and you spend one gallon, and you know that one gallon is, let's say, $2.5, because we're not in Europe, we're at seven and a half. Uh, and then you... Oh, you didn't know that? I didn't know that, no. Oh, it yeah, makes, this is the cheapest gas in the galaxy. Considering that the yeah. euro conversion is like... No, it's pretty much one, there. It's more. No, it's like a little bit. A couple of percent. It's not a big deal. The gas is actually seven and a half dollars. I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> so if I want to go to Italy, great. Just don't drive. Uh, so what do we have? We have a rate at which you say my car can cover 30 miles per gallon. Great. 30 miles per gallon, that means if you're using regular, call it two and a half bucks. So technically you are driving 30 miles for two and a half bucks. Great. If I live 14 miles from RV, then my round trip to work is 28. Well, call that 30. So each trip in a week for gas costs me two and a half dollars a day. Now it's not here four weeks, four days a week, cost me 10 bucks, right? The gas. So my gas is 10 bucks, let's say, um, to come to work um, for the week. You can compute that. Then you have four and a half weeks in a month, not four weeks four and a half weeks in a month, right? Uh, because what's, uh, one week has seven days, right? Seven days times four is 28. But month generally has 30 or 31 days. There's like one oddball coming up. The rest is all 30 or 31, right? So you can compute, right? Using the rate, you can compute that it will take about 40 to 40, 45 bucks, right, of gas money just to get you to work uh, in a month. And then you will have other driving and so on. So you can say, I'm spending 50 or 55 dollars a month on gas. Well, that's a cool thing to know for budgeting, right? And it's not that you had to sit there and really, right? write down every receipt the, for the gas and all of these kind of things. You just use rates from algebra, right? My car is 30 miles per gallon. One gallon is two and a half dollars. So I can cover 30 miles in two and a half dollars. Done deal. And from there, you can compute. You can, you want to go to DC, let's say. Well, how many miles? And then you figure out with the rate and you figure out the money and all of that stuff. So you can do a lot. With these, with these rates. Um, so we are going to see this again, right, and compare different options uh, later on in the end of the chapter um, to do more of, more of this stuff. Now, I also want to talk about uh, what, we take, what we call a rate of change when we involve a function. You see, in some cases, um, your uh, variable changes gradually. It doesn't have these jumps. The data plan, you either spent a gigabyte or you didn't. So you either pay 10 bucks or you didn't, right? It doesn't really work like that with your height, right? <coughs> you are not one foot tall or at that point long, and then, right, two, and then three. There are all other heights in between, because you grow gradually, right? And then you start, reach a certain age, and you start shrinking, right? So, certain variables in life have this continuous change, and we measure that through functions, right? Another one is body mass index and uh, <coughs> you know, size of the shoes, I know when it's seven and then eight tomorrow, and then nine, right, the next month. You go, you know, maybe seven, seven and a half, and then eight, and then maybe eight and a half, right? So there are smaller divisions in between. So when we have this situation, when the data is changing continuously, 
we can use functions to compute these slopes that connect points. And that will require of us to change the formula uh, from algebra into a pre-calculus slope formula. So, slope as a rate of change. And this is the pre-calculus part from 1.5 that we are supposed to cover today. We start with the idea that m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We used this earlier when I gave you two points to come up with the equation of the line. This is your standard algebra slope equation. Now, for a given function, just draw arbitrary squiggly line like that. If you pick uh, two points and you connect them with a straight line, these two points have x1, y1 coordinate and x2, y2 coordinate. And what I told you is just those are locations. Locations on the floor. You can take a piece of chalk and draw this on a street and then just assign the coordinates there. And technically we can use anything as a coordinate system to find location. Can you give me an example in a classroom of something you can use as a coordinate system to map a location of every student's seat and my seat? Just look around. What could you possibly use in this classroom as a... Ceiling tiles? Beautiful. Look up. See that? Doesn't that look like my paper over there? Yeah. Now, those ceiling tiles are two by two. And I can use these ceiling tiles to figure out the area of this classroom. I can use it to map out your seating to... You know, if I if I set somewhere zero zero, and then I just keep counting negative two, negative four, negative six, positive two, positive four, positive six, negative two, negative four, right? And then that way positive two, po right? I can map every single location. That's how you create video games, right? So you, you come up with uh, with some kind of coordinate system, or if we have tiles on the floor, you can do the same thing, right? Sometimes it's visible. Uh, but usually ceiling is uh, is a good one. Obviously in a house, you're not going to have it. But unless you go home now and just draw it on, see what happens. <laughs> Test your luck, right? All right. Now, here is the jump from algebra to pre-calc. Lock the doors. This line, this curve which I which I have here, is some curve f of x, some function, which when you provide x, it spits out y. We did that on the first day. Now you plug 3, you calculate, and you get some y out, right? We know that y is equal to f of x. That means that if my input is x1, it will spit out y1. If my input is x2, it will spit out y2. So do you see how I can replace these in my slope formula and make the new slope formula, which is based in functions for pre-calc? I can call that f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. And before you scream, why? Notice that this has no y's. The entire formula is only dependent on x. Right? So I don't have to give you two points now. 
I don't have to give you x comma y and x comma y. I can just give you two x values and you can compute the slope of the line. And that slope of the line measures the change. What do I mean measures the change? Look, if I draw this right triangle here, you have the change in x and the change in y. This is your, usually we put this triangle and we call that change. Change in x and change in y. Uh, change in x is x2 minus x1. And that's, that's change, right? If you no, want to know how much your height changed in two years, you subtract your current minus the height from two years ago, right? If you want to know how much your weight changed, right? You do the same thing. You measure yourself, and you measured yourself maybe yesterday, and you subtract. Well, in my case, add, right? Change in y, y2 minus y1. So you see over there, I hope you see, positive change. Because whatever concept um, we're observing there, it gained. As it gained in X, it gained in Y. Now, that is mathematical change, and we call that positive because it's growth. But in life, that doesn't need to mean positive, right? Sometimes in life, right, tumor growth, that you're not going to call the positive tumor growth positive in life, right? But in mathematics, we don't deal with the particular examples like that, right? We just say, if the quantity is increasing, we don't care if its meaning is positive or negative in our life, right? We care if the value increases. So, increasing money, well, right? In life, that generally means good, right? Unless you win the lottery, then it's always bad. <laughs> Google it up, right? <laughs> Google it. But um, we see the positive increase. X has grown and Y has grown. Cool. So now that we understand the change, now I can say that, the, we said this before, slope measures the change, and now we have equation for the slope, which is rate of change, which does not involve y's. So this is your um, equation that measures rate of change of the function because if you are an ant that sits here and you walk along this line there you gained on height right in a position where you are so it changed if this is your the graph of your body weight right so you said, yeah, I'm going to lose some weight, right? Then you start dieting, 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 starving to death, right? And you say, oh, okay. But, um, and you get here, and then you say, yeah, I am really starving, and I am really losing weight, but I'm feeling so weak. Let me just go to the gym. And muscle weighs a lot more than fat, right? So if you want to lose weight, just never go to the gym, because obviously, right? You just increase your weight immediately. I was told when I hit 250, you're too fat, go to the gym. Good. Go to the gym, 280. Okay, should we go more to the gym? 300 next time, <laughs> right? And then there are the scales for me. So. <laughs> then I have to go to one of those 4-H fairs to, like... Wait for the cow to get hop off so I can hop on. So, yeah. <laughs> Went to the gym another year. <laughs> See what happened. Um, 
so I hope you understand the change. There is a function which measures body mass index, takes your, um, uh, your height, your, your age, and uh, the weight, and a whole bunch of other things, I think three or four or five different things, and you mush them all into the equation, and it comes up with uh, body mass index, right? That's related to, to, to mass. So we can now take a look at certain functions and problems and calculate the rate of change uh, for given values. Now, most of these problems are word problems. Woohoo! Right? So let's take a look at a few homework exercises from section 1.5, stuff that you are going to see on my math lab and eventually on the exam. So let's see. 1.5. Let's do at least two of these. Do they have anything? Linear equation, linear equation, linear equation. All right, so here are, uh, first we're going to do the boring problem, right? This has not, no application. It just says find the average rate of change. So let's say um, problem 16. Find the average rate of change. Now that's that's that. Maybe I should add average over here. Word. Find the average rate of change for f of x equals x squared minus two x. From x one equals 3 to x2 equals 6. All right. Uh, this problem is it's plug in. What we do in this problem is we first, so we are calculating this slope, the average value. And we are supposed to plug in f of x2. How much is my x2? Six. six. So I need to calculate f of six. Then I need to subtract y. What? Uh, f of three. F of three. And then I need to divide that by? Six. Minus three. Minus three. Perfect. So if you are looking at the formula, the formula says compute the function at the second x minus compute the function at the first x and then divide that by x2 minus x1, which is 6 minus 3. All right, so now what does it mean f of 6? means plug 6 in your function. That would be 6 squared minus 2 times 6. Are we all green on that? That is us plugging 6 in the function. The next piece of the puzzle says sub subtract 3 plugged in a function. Are we all green on that? And then we are dividing it by 6 minus 3 is just 3, so I'm just going to subtract that. 6 squared is very good. Uh, minus 2 times 6 is perfect. Minus 3 squared is good. Minus 2 times 3 is yeah. 
divided by 3. 36 minus 12 is <coughs> minus 9 minus 6 is all divided by 3. 24 minus 3 is divided by 3 is 7. seven. Um, yes. So you're not like solving the f of 6 minus f of 3 at all? You're just plugging it straight into the equation? Well, you, if you want to compute them on the side, you, you can. Okay. And then just stuff everything in. Okay. Because eventually you get to the same. Some students prefer to find this piece on the side and then this one separately and whatever numbers they get, they plug in. In our case, you would get 24 for the first one and 3 for the second one. So, if that's... See, math is about making people happy, right? And especially here, you know, what we do at this institution. So, you know, your happiness is our primary concern. Like United Airlines, just don't cross the line. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, we're done. The average rate of change of the function as x changes from 3 to 6 is 7. Now, what does this mean? Well, it's not applied problem, so, pfft, right? It means that we gained 7 units in y as x went from 3 to 6. That's what it means. Now, this is not attached to any application, so it's just whatever. <laughs> no one cares, right? It's more for mechanics of calculation, where you know uh, the way to read the formula and then to plug appropriate numbers and things where they belong. So I'm going to go to that one more time. Formula you must know. I mean, welcome to Precalc 1, right? That's, that's for you. Now, this says f of x2. Well, your x2 is 6, so stick 6 in f of x2. f of x1 minus f of x1. Your x1 is 3, so now stick 3 instead of x1. And then you have your x2 minus x1 for the denominator. Now, f of 6 is a completely new calculation because you are computing function at x equals 6. In our first section, we just did that as a whole problem. Now that's a problem of a bigger problem. Problem within a problem. So, we plug... 6 in what? Why is this thing here? Good. So, we plug 6 into the function, and if you change this to 6, then these change to 6, and that's how you get your 6 squared minus 2 times 6. The second one tells you to plug in 3 in the function f. So, x squared minus 2x becomes 3 squared minus 2 times 3 because now your x is replaced by 3. So that's this puppy here. So you have your f of 6 minus f of 3. And then 6 minus 3 is 3 on the bottom. From there, you follow calculations. 6 squared, 36, minus 12, 3 squared, 9, minus 6, 36 minus 12, 24, 9 minus 6, 3, write parentheses first from PEMDAS, 24 minus 3, 21, divided by 3, 7, and done. <coughs> Meaning, as I said, in this particular case, we have no application, so the meaning is, as x goes from 3 to 6, the y gains seven points, right? Whatever y I was calculating. Now, obviously, all of this is much more interesting when we do the word problem. But how about we do one more of these whatever problems, huh? Because we can, 
let's find um, let's do one more just because we can ooh f of x is equal to square root of x and your x1 is 9 and x2 is 16 plug everything in the same formula and let's see what you get Okay, so average value, we also can call it a slope, is going to be f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. So this is our good old formula changed into pre-calculus form. Now we have our square root of x2, which is 16, minus square root of our x1, which is 9, divided by 16 minus 9. Square root of 16 is? Square root of 9 is? And 16 minus 9 is? So the answer is? Perfect. So as x changed from 9 to 16, the y just a little tiny bit, right? Just 1 over 7, right? It's a seventh of one unit. It's a 49 times difference of, in change, right? For, from 7 to 1 over 7. And, and, and that's that.
it's technically how gym works, right? You go forever in terms of time. Seven hours lost, one seventh of a pound. Quit, right? That's the New Year's resolution. Quit. Day, day seven. <laughs> day ten. Gosh. All right, cool. Let's take a look at... How about one more problem and for like a word problem for this section, something that you will probably see similar on the homework. And then call it a day, huh? No? Yes? I just need some input because you know this makes me depressed. I go home and I drink and smoke. So please talk to me, right? Because I need you to be louder than the voices. And if you say yes, hi, hello, like how time. are you, right? You need emotional support. Yeah, don't we all? Yeah, I know. Like, if you want unconditional love, get a dog. That you will never get it out of person. But, but at least you can say yes when someone says. I don't know. Have you ever pissed off a dog? They stay angry for a while. Not nearly as. <laughs> cat heads hates you just because you exist. Like sometimes, right? You go to you go to pet the cat to go like no, right? Dog's always there. Right? Dog's always like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I've never met a meat that in my life. Well, you are the only one okay, that I know of. Generally, when I go to my friends, I was like, don't touch that one, it will shred you, <laughs> right? Just because you exist. And you can see the, you know, you can see it in the face. It's like, in the morning, it hates itself, by the end of the world, hates everyone. Right? <laughs> Develops that hate every day. That's his life. Um, hmm, what should we pick over here? Something that... Uh, okay. So we have the choice between percentage of total spending in the United States on food and health care, number of active duty gay service members discharged from military for homosexuality, graph of a model for discharges under don't ask and don't tell. Those are the three choices. First one. The, the food and health care? Great. It simply goes like this. The more burgers you eat, the more health care you need. <laughs> the more broccoli you eat, the less health care. That, that's the graph, right? Because, <laughs> that's basically what the graph shows. But let's see some numbers surrounding that. Oh, actually, this one is not the average rate of change. This is just uh, the, the formula for, uh, it's not a rate of change. It's just a linear line, to get the linear line. So we can do that. Let's do the don't ask, don't tell discharge from uh, military. I have no clue what that means, but it doesn't sound good. <laughs> OK. Basically, the military discharging people who are openly gay. Don't ask, don't tell? Yep. Doesn't sound like that. Because the other one says number of active duty servicemen. Oh, no. Like the other problem. Don't ask, don't tell was how they discharged people. It was the law that allowed them to. Oh. Because of the other problem, I was thinking that that one, like the, the, the don't ask, don't tell had to do something like with maybe a war crime or something. It was just get rid of it but uh, all right um, let's see 
Yeah, I thought that this book had like at least one. You take a stats book, it's all grins, like all sharks and, 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 and car accidents. Like you take a stats book and this one is, as you can see, yes. All right, let's do problem um, uh, 32. Uh, they give us a graph of this. Uh, they start somewhere around 500. It goes up and then it goes down. And then uh, these numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way ending at 13 on the graph, are the years after 1994. And the Y is the number of people discharged which peaks after that's 1100 then 1200 is the largest this peak is below 1200 now you don't have to worry about making the function out of this yet they give you the function for this so f of x which is which represents the number of discharges is 1.1 x cubed minus 35 is going to be annoying to compute x squared plus 264x awesome plus 557 So now, X is the years after 1994. So, they're asking you, well, I'm going to modify this. They're not asking exactly this, but um, to find from... 2001 to uh, 2006. Now, what is your X for 2001? Seven. seven. X is seven for 2001. Because these are discharges calculated and the beginning of time is 1994. So 0 is 1994, 1 is 1995, 2 is 1996. And as you go up, right, you will get x equals 7. How about 2006? 12. There are your x1 and x2. And you have the function. Now, let's hope that you don't get the decimal points, right? And if you do get a decimal, round it to a whole person, right? You cannot present, you know, 34.7 of a soldier or 34.7 of a baby or something like that, right? Certain things are whole, you know, you can't go in a store and buy half of an egg. You might convince someone to sell you one egg, like good luck, right? Because they generally go six or, or 12 or more, right? But you can't buy half. So when we deal with word problems that contain people, babies, and dogs, right, we're going to have a whole unit. Now, if you have something that could have a decimal point like money, $3.25, that's 3.25, it's okay to have decimals. So I want to know to the whole unit the change in discharges, right? Now, when you look at the graph, are you expecting the change to be positive, meaning more people are discharged, or negative, meaning less people are discharged as you are moving from 2004 to 2001 to 2006? Negative. negative. You are expecting less people discharged uh, because the graph is 
uh, dipping down. Why is this keyboard coming up? You know what to do. You have the formula f of x2 minus f of x1. Plug your x2. Use your calculator. Plug your x. Uh, you can use your cell phone. You don't have to ramage for the calculator, so it's, it's fine. Use the cell phone. If you have the computer already up and running, you can use the calculator in there.
Are we all getting 96 after all these calculations? Yeah. Um, it's, I got a negative 96. Yes, because it's less okay. that they are decreasing. That's why. So, I said, so the answer there is it's 96 less people a year. On average, yes, and it's decreasing, yes. The, the negative means it's decreasing, and on average, 96 per year. Now, that means that it's average for, the, for this period of five years. In 2001, they discharged more people than in 2006. But when you average them, we say 96 per year, right? 96 per year. But it was more discharge in the first years than in the last years. Yes. So would the answer be wrong if you wrote the exact same thing but you included the negative and the ninety-six? Uh, no. Right. It, it's just concept. Well, I did not ask you. Uh, that negative plays the role. If I am to ask, uh, is the number of discharges increasing or decreasing? And now you would use the negative to say the number of discharges is decreasing. Fair? Good. Bye. I don't have any ending. I